<laughs> Hi everyone. I don't even know if this looks in the right format, but here I am, Instagram Live. Um, I wanted to come in and have a little chat regarding uh, makeup brushes. Now hold on, I'm a little bit uh, caught off the hop. I've got a ton of stuff with me. Um, and the reason that I felt like I wanted to have this discussion is, you know what, one second, stay right there, I'm going to put you on hold and come back and start this over. I need my phone so I can actually see if any of you, hello, hello, if any of you are actually going to ask a question. So Michael, I see you there. I've got to go get my cell phone because I've got to see if anyone's sending me questions. One second, I'm not as good as you, Michael Keith. Okay, well, it's all go. I've been packing my makeup kit for the next movie and I've been cleaning my brushes. And as I've been doing so, I have been um, cogitating things that I see um, on social media. Misconceptions, actually. Let me just get onto live if I can see it. Ah, I just saw me. Um, and what I found, I'm not going to bother with that. What I want to set straight is the record. Okay, guys. So I know that we are a very broad spectrum makeup community these days. One of the things that, hi Michael, one of the things that really concerns me is the amount of misinformation that gets shared. And I have to say, hi, hi Coco, Coco. There, there. So, um... The amount of misinformation that gets shared on social media regarding all sorts of things, quite frankly. Everyone is a guru. Everybody's got a mouth on them. God knows I have. Um, but at least I'm educated and I've got 30 years of experience and I do my homework before I speak. And I am seeing a whole plethora of people advising and guiding other young up-and-coming inspired artists and they're guiding them the wrong way. Um, let's start with makeup brushes. So when I went to school, I went to art school. Who's that? Oh, Juan Ali, hello. Uh, anyway, I went to art school first. They taught us how to hold a brush. You know, I was painting with brushes like this, six inch artist handle. So let's discuss the architecture of a brush. A brush. A traditional paintbrush has a six, six inch artist handle. The reason for that is because they paint using their wrist. And I paint like this when I'm doing body makeup and character makeup. In fact, a lot of the times actors notice my technique is that of an artist, a painter. Okay, so we have traditional artist, handle, artist handles, six inch handles. Then, with the advent of cosmetic makeup brushes, we went to a cosmetic handle, which is five inches, okay? So we started off with the artist handle, which is a six inch or even longer sometimes handle, but the cosmetic handle is a five inch. And then you go down for a travel size, which I actually don't have with me here, yeah. A travel size is a four inch handle. So there are all sorts of different handles. How a handle is set into a brush affects the entire balance of the tool that you're holding in your hand. I see people holding a brush like this. Why? Are you planning on killing someone? I see people holding a brush like this. Why? Are you planning on poking their eye out or giving them a skin rash? Because the only time you do this is if you're stippling. And that's for character work, generally, or something creative. That's not an application, my friends. So, you know, we have a different type of handle affecting the brush. A brush sits in your hand and fits your hand, okay? A nice tapered handle will enable you, because this is a taper, believe it or not, even though it's a shallow, it is a taper. I hope you can see this. So it sits in your hand comfortably. Look how that fits me, even the long one, if I want to paint. And notice how I move my hand. This is not about working from your shoulder. 
This is not about working from your elbow. This is about fluid extensions of your imagination. So your brain is getting information from your subject through your heart and soul, because it's a creative process, right? So this thing picks up this thing that's sitting in front of you in the makeup chair and it sends little messages up into your brain. And your brain then projects right down into your arm and determines how you're going to achieve your results. Now, the balance of a brush is everything for that. And I work very, very hard at putting balance factors into the creation of my brush. I want it to feel lightweight so that it literally becomes an extension of your hand. If you are holding a sledge, sledgehammer in your hand, are you doing art or home improvement? I just want to know, because <laughs> I've seen them. I've seen the bludgeons and I've seen the big fat handles. In fact, I, I threw away an entire set a while ago I got from Alibaba. I bought a set. I've been buying cheap ass brushes from China. Because bearing in mind, they this set cost me two bucks from AliExpress, okay? Two dollars. Before I've arrived, one of the ferrules has even fallen off. Can you see this? So before, you've just seen me open the bag and, hang on, one of the brushes dropped. And before I've opened the bag, one of the ferrules has fallen off. Let's take it out and show you. Okay, right. So actually this helped us. This is a ferrule, the metal bit. This is a metal, it is a, oh, someone, hang on. Heidi, Heidi Hosey sent a request to be in your live video. What do you want to talk about, Heidi? Send me a text first and then I'll, uh, I'll, I'll let you in if I know what you're going to say. So look, we've got a ferrule. We've got the metal bit. We have the head and then we have the handle. So how a brush is made, it's in a mold, if it's natural hair, it's pushed into the mold, they glue the ends, they shove it down the ferrule, glue again, and then glue to the handle, and then crimp, and I like a double crimp. So there are different ways of making brushes. What I'm seeing in the market is stuff that people are saying that is utter nonsense. I saw recently a young man saying that makeup brushes were designed to remove makeup. What up, Mbaku? I'm sending you love. I know you're with my tin. Um, so anyway, he said that makeup brushes were designed to remove makeup and not apply it. And I thought, in whose world? Seriously. I mean, in whose world? Now, this guy works for one of the pro makeup stores. He sells you product. Mwah, 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 dukey boy. Love you long time. You know it. So um, I shouldn't even be doing this on my live. Winston Duke's in the house, everyone. Can I see some love for Mbaku, please? My big Trini. My flipping big Trini prince. Come on. So anyway, makeup brushes remove makeup. In whose world? Thank you for saying I bring the integrity back to the biz. Let me tell you why. The reason that you feel it from me is because I speak from the heart. This is not about making money. This is not about talking nonsense now. I hear enough of it and it pisses me off because I'm a Brit and we say it how it is. And I want you to learn from a great person, not a mediocre person. There is too much information and too much education being delivered from mediocre artists who do not strive for excellence. You know, elevate yourself, keep growing, keep helping the industry to grow. Be true and be honest. Don't put up with bullshit and do not put up with misinformation and challenge every bit of information that you get. Ask questions, my friends. That's why I'm here, because I want you to ask me questions. Makeup brushes, one, do not remove makeup, they apply it. Now, this was in comparison with a sponge. People were saying, the sponge is the only thing that applies. Okay, in whose world and who told you this? And what's your experience? Because if you're using those cheap ass brushes in China that feel like they're made out of corrugated iron, that do not move, 
You know the ones that split when you've got cream on them so that you get a nice streaky application? Come on, I know you've all seen them. Look, it's something like this. Look, literally, even when I put it on my brush, you see it starts to split up. Do you see this? Right. When you've got a natural hairbrush, let me find one of mine, let's hope it doesn't bloody do it. When you've got a natural hairbrush, that doesn't happen. Do you see natural hair? Mm -hmm. So, you've got stiff synthetic hair. Let's start again, Sean. Makeup brush hair is gauged, okay? It comes in different thicknesses. Now, I'm talking animal and synthetic. Natural hair is its own gauge. Imagine pantyhose. You've got 7 denier, 10 denier, 15 denier, 20 denier, 40 denier. Yes, man, bring back the brush, Claire. So, you have denier, right? It denotes the density of your pantyhose or your stockings. Ooh. With makeup brushes, with synthetic makeup brushes, they call it gauge. Gauge is the circumference of each and every synthetic hair. So, for example, this is one of my vegan collection, okay? This is a synthetic, it's a super high-grade monofilament. Look how it moves, okay? It's got a very soft snap, it's beautiful. Look at this, you get a nice spread with no separation. Why is that? Because the hair is flexible. The reason the hair is flexible is because I use a seven gauge synthetic. Now, remember those brushes I said that bludgeon you because they're so heavy and the hair is so stiff? They are made out of a 10 to 20 gauge to 30 gauge, some of them. That's why they're so heavy. That's why you get a streaky application. That is why the brush separates when it's got a cream product on. Yes, Henry Charles Vegan. Hello there, girl. So, you know, it's a very simple thing. When you're trying out a synthetic brush, move it. If it doesn't move like this, don't buy it. It's not gonna give you the results you want. Of course, you have your choice. You can do whatever you like. Hello, Miss Erica Carr, thank you for joining in. Um, you have your choice to purchase anything you want, of course. I'm not here to dictate, I'm trying to elevate. It's not about dictate, it's about speaking the truth so that you can take from me, take my knowledge, take my experience, and then have a more discerning eye based on fact, okay? So brushes were not created to remove makeup, they were created to apply makeup. The earliest brushes were found in ancient Egypt, going back thousands of years, who've done your history. They were originally made from feathers, animal hair, all sorts of little fibrous bulbs, that they would absolutely boil and bash down and soften the hair and then make handmade brushes from then. They have been discovered in tombs in South Africa, thousands of years old. So a makeup brush is not unique. It's just the development of it that is. So when I started in makeup 30 years ago, I inherited my father's makeup brushes. You know, Dada's brushes, they were paint brushes. He used to buy them from art stores. They were all sable, squirrel, and pony. He did not, synthetics weren't really a thing then because it wasn't. This is now, Dada was doing movies in the 60s and 70s. So, you know, it was all uh, animal hair then. And I had Dada's brushes after he died in 1980. And I had them with me for the first 10 years of my makeup career. So. I got them when he passed away when I was 12. They were already 20 years old and they'd been used on movies, special effects, character, all of the above. And then I had them for the first 10 years. So that made them 30 years old by the time I hung them up to dry. Oh yeah, by the way, come and meet my father. This is my dad. This is Hubert Richards, okay? This is the inspiration. This is the one person that I walked into his makeup room when I was six years old <laughs> and I didn't know what makeup was. I just smelt it and Dada was working on a movie and this picture was taken on the set of a film called Mary Queen of Scots and Dada was making up Vanessa Redgrave. So this has got a story behind it. I'm not gonna tell it now, but I just want you to see my dad because 
He is always with me every day I see 9-11, that's his birthday, and this is the person who inspired my makeup career and also inspired the love of it so much that I decided to make a company of, of cosmetics. Don't fall over, Daddy, you're right there with me. So in this jar, I've got some brushes here that are 20 years old. <laughs> this is a 20-year-old makeup brush, my friends. It's sable. The head might be a little bit wobbly. Guess what? I can always stick it on. It's, yeah, or Pox Whitney. I know, I know. God bless him, right? B. Richards, rest his soul. 20-year-old makeup brushes, friends. 20 years old. So what is this nonsense that I also hear on social media that synthetic is better than natural hair? In whose opinion? Ask me some questions. Go ahead. I mean, I'm sure you've got them because I can pretty much have an answer for everything. Who says synthetic is better than natural hair? It's different. It does a different thing. A synthetic will often have a stronger snap because it is slightly stiffer. No matter how soft and flexible it is, it's never going to be as soft as natural hair. So of course a synthetic is great for applying creams, for apl applying denser makeup. I mean, ironically enough, have you ever thought this? In the advent of Instagram, synthetic makeup brushes have exploded. Why do you think that is? Think, let's just think, because I think I've got the answer. Okay, what do we see on Instagram makeup wise? We see 20 inch spackle, like troweled on. Well, it's no bloody wonder they like using synthetic. You place it on with a synthetic, you blend it and make it real with a natural hair. So perhaps, just perhaps, yes, Brian Devon, because people love to cake it. It's not just about an animal cruelty thing. I don't know who posted that. Let me just say this. Um, natural hair in makeup brushes, animals are no longer killed for their hair. I need to say this here and now and go on record saying this. And neither is the hair just cut, okay? So what it is, is natural hair is actually these days a byproduct of the food industry. You need to understand that. If you don't like that, and you want to have vegan brushes, so be it. That's why I make great vegan brushes. You have to accommodate and elevate everyone. Hey DTC, how are you? But synthetic makeup brushes are not, in my opinion, after 30 years trying every flipping brush on the planet, there is no way that synthetic brushes outdo a natural brush. A natural brush will outdo a synthetic makeup brush any day, okay? So, cashmere. Beautiful, soft, it's a denser hair. Look at look how it moves, look. You can't get a synthetic to do it like that. This is cashmere. So you're gonna be able to paint with it because it will hold color. So you can do body art with it. You can do color washes with it. You can apply a cream with it. You can apply a, a powder with it. Because cashmere is a goat derivative, so the hair diameter, remember the gauge, it's slightly stiffer and that is why it will pick up a little more product than let's say, oh, where's that lovely squirrel brush that I had earlier on, than this one. This is a pine squirrel makeup brush. Look at this. Look at the way this moves. So soft. I don't even know what I did with my, with my big number 13. Is that it? No, that's my queen. It's somewhere in here. But anyway, a squirrel hairbrush is super, super fine. I'm gonna bring these hairs right up to the camera. I'm really hoping that you can see how thin they are. Can you see this? Just here. Can you see how fine these hairs are? You're applying powders with this sort of hair. The reason you're not applying a cream with a squirrel hairbrush is because the density of the cream is going to be too much for the hair to maintain if it's a flat pressed brush. If you've got a squirrel brush that is gonna be rounder, so let's say, oh God, do you know what, I don't make them. Instead I made them in goat hair. If you have a squirrel brush that is gonna be more of a round shape, you're gonna be able to work it with cream, just like I do actually with this cashmere brush, but it's still a different application. 
because squirrel is so much finer than cashmere, all right? So that's the other thing. Squirrel preferably use with powders, always powders. There are different types of squirrel hair. You have blue squirrel and pine squirrel. I use European hair. I don't get uh, hair sourced from China. I get mine all from there because I believe that the European regulations are so much stronger that I want to have that quality. Now, we've got this one, this one, and then we're gonna go into sable. So sable, my friends, in my opinion, Brian, sorry, I missed which number from classic. That Brian, that's the 20. It's the medium louche uh, blush blender. Okay, classic 20. Now, darlings, this is sable. In my opinion, for application, for paint, for diversity, for longevity, you cannot outdo sable. Um, pretty much every pro artist working right up at the top is using natural hair. They're using this for their foundation brush or something very like it. Um, this is an industry standard. It's actually, in England, they call this shape a hovis because it looks like a hovis loaf. So any Brits there, that's what they call it. This is my classic queen number 11. The reason I love sable, can you hear all these brushes falling? Isn't it great? The reason I love sable is because, first of all, it's strong. It's got a great snap to it, which means that you can blend away. Okay, beautifully. Look at that brush. Excuse me. Look how that moves. It's just so soft. You can apply creams. You can, oh, Brian, he's got three. He's showing off. So you can apply liquids. You can apply creams. I paint with it. I do special effects with it. Glue with it. Anything you want. Body makeup. Paint with acrylics. Paint with gouache. What do you want to do? Use it just use it because sable is the one hair that literally will work with anything from a cream makeup to a powder makeup to an acrylic paint to a glue let's let's put it like that okay and then you clean it and it washes up like new nothing outlasts sable nothing remember going back to dada's brushes they were 20 years when i had them and I've now had them another 10, and then I put them to rest. That's all, okay? So a synthetic brush does not outdo a natural hair brush. A makeup brush is not designed to remove makeup. It's actually designed to apply it, but it can remove makeup if you want to have a really natural finish, okay? So the reason I love Sable for my foundation, you're so welcome, it's beautiful to share, right, Latoya? We share our knowledge and we share the truth, always. And this isn't about treading on other people's toes. This is only about elevating you guys. And you know you always come to me and ask me anyway, so let's do this. So when I do a foundation, I always do a double brush. Have I got another number 11? Yes, I do. Is that that number 13? No. So I'm gonna apply my foundation like this, okay? We don't apply a foundation like this we don't apply a foundation like this. We apply a foundation with a flick of our wrist and a backwards and forwards motion, all right? And then we're gonna double brush it. You do a double brush. That's how you get skin to look like skin, okay? I'm gonna try and save it. <laughs> Mommy, I don't know, I'm a makeup artist and a mum, I don't know about saving this. But you do a double brush application, okay? To get a good foundation. Now. In terms of applying makeup, please keep your makeup radiant and a natural hairbrush will help you do that. What I find with synthetic is that no matter what, I never get it as refined. I feel like it's always adding to the makeup. And then that brings me back to Instagram. The fact that all of those Instagram advisors are telling us that synthetic is best. Well, I believe that they're absolutely entitled to their opinion. But I also believe that they're talking to the housewives, they're talking to the, the fans, they're talking to the people who like makeup, but they're not talking to pros because they can't be because they are not. So if you are a real pro, don't learn from Instagram. And certainly if you see something on Facebook that you think, 
well, where did he get that piece of information? Like that bloke that posted that makeup brushes were designed to remove makeup, who works for a pro makeup store in New York. I'm like, no, I'm sorry. I, why is anyone actually not asking him where he got that information was and to prove it, okay? So let's talk about shapes of brushes and diversity. Now, a lot of you come up to me when we're at trade shows, when we're at events, when we're at all sorts of things, whenever you see me, and you come up and you say, Sean, what is this brush for? Okay, Sean, what is this brush for? What is whatever? You know, you might say, well, is this only for a lip? Is this only for an eyeshadow? Whose rules are there? There's no one's rules. No one told anyone what was what. You're an artist. A brush is a brush is a brush. A brush is what you make it. Like I said before, a brush is an extension of your arm as you create, whether your beauty, character, whatever, it is an extension. So if you want this brush, to become a character brush, great, it will. Do you want this brush to be an eyeshadow brush? Great, guess what, it will. I've had editorial, um, Dick Page uses this to paint eyes with, for God's sake. I've got all sorts of people using all sorts of brushes for all sorts of things. So what I want to say to you newbies, especially to you guys, is you must question. And furthermore, you have to do your homework. It's not just about sitting on your ass on Facebook, joining some bloody group and asking people who don't know what they're talking about for advice. This is about you turning off your laptop, going into your room, your kitchen, your studio, your back garden, your balcony, whatever it bloody well is, and painting. It's about learning how to hold a brush, learning the rights and wrongs for yourself. Trial and error. How in heaven's name do you think people like us learned? There was not the abundance of information being shared. There was not the abundance of schools. And thank God, actually, because at least we had better quality than the load of muck that called themselves pro-education out there. So we practiced and we taught ourselves. And those brilliant Academy Award winners and nominees and all of the people that you aspire to that are in their 50s and 40s, this is my generation, guys. And we used to practice in our parents' garages. We would paint. I remember my mother used to come into my bedroom at two o'clock in the morning and just say, Sean, enough. Go to sleep. You've got school in the morning. Katie, I have to run. I really hope you're able to save this. I can finish up watching later. Thanks for all you do. God bless you, baby. Keep watching. Keep holding the faith. So you've got to practice, kids. Why are you asking from each other when really all you have to do is play around and try things out? See how something works with something else. Try it on yourself. Do test makeups at home. Paint on a canvas. Paint on a canvas. Try every different medium so that you learn how you can mix things and how you can get different effects with different hair types. You know, not all hair needs to be soft. Sometimes you need it to be a bit stiffer. Look, like for example, my little texturizing brushes, they've got a really good snap, okay? And I want that because if I want to push in a product and push in a glue, I use this for gluing. If I want to put a texture underneath somewhere, there's a little bit more of a snap here so that it will give me more of a textured finish. The softer the hair, the smoother your finish. The stiffer your hair, the more textured your finish, right? Now the other pitfalls that you should be looking at when you hold a makeup brush and you're going in looking for makeup brushes, I want you to test, I want you to check how they feel. Oh my God, this feels like barbed wire on my skin. It's no wonder your clients are gonna get rashes and allergies because their skin is being, <laughs> Their skin is being aggravated. I feel like throwing this to the dog. Um, you know, their skin is being aggravated. If you're putting a beautiful, oh my God, hello, I'm back. If you're putting that on a face versus this God awful piece of nastiness that feels like you could clean a chimney with it, then you're gonna have 
better finish as well because your skin is not being aggravated. Your client's skin isn't being aggravated. Your clients are comfortable. They know you use great tools. So these are the sorts of things also. Um, other misconceptions that people come back to me and ask, Sean, I've just bought a brush. It's a big dense brush and some of it is throwing off some hair. Well, yes, it will. The reason brushes like this, which is my best kept secret eight, I've got a nine coming out, by the way, it's super fab. Um, yeah, the reason why brushes like this shed at the very beginning is because they are very, very densely packed, right? What they do is when they finish shaping, they generally then give it, it's called a cosmetic pass. Every makeup brush that is hand shaped and hand finished gets a cosmetic pass. And they do it with a little bit of a static inducing uh, film so that it will draw as much hair out of these dense brushes as possible. Oh, I had my sable Charles Fox and screen face brushes since the 90s. Yes, and looking forward to having your brushes for the next 20 years. Amen. Thank you. Yes, and you will. And they will be in your kit for 20 years. Trust me. So, cosmetic pass. They literally take it around the brush. It's going to take off any loose hairs or trimmings or any fine finishing that might be re uh, residual in the brush. Now, obviously, that's not going to clean the brush completely from your manufacturer. So, usually, after about the third wash, and I say wash because I really hope you're not using flipping brush cleaner because it's toxic as hell. So after your third wash, the brush beds down. And that's what we call it. It's called bedding down. The hair beds down, it settles, it stops shedding, and you should be good to go for the rest of your brush career. The beauty about having a brush that lasts 20 years, as my friend just said there, is that over time, natural hair will actually erode and so you have customized brushes that have their shapes changed according to your style of makeup oh my god i bet you haven't heard that on social media before but yes my friends it is true the longer you have a natural hairbrush and use it the more over time, and I mean it takes years to do this, but it does happen, your brush will actually end up changing according to how you've been using it because of very gentle erosion. You will not get that with a synthetic or a vegan brush because it's a monofilament. Furthermore, <clears throat> although, um, although synthetics are really brilliant these days and they're doing really great quality synthetics, I know, I mean, I use them in my in my Nouveau and in my Innovation collection, both of which are vegan, the hair is so fine at the tip that you would never know that it was a blunt tip. But actually with a synthetic, no matter how fine that hair is, the very, very tip of it is a flat top. It is not a taper. So this is a taper, okay? Natural hair is a taper. Let's talk about the different grades of natural hair in terms of a, B, and C. So we call it A, B, C. We call it premium grade, we call it mid grade, and then we call it low grade. Premium grade hair, if this is, let's say this is a nice bit of swatch of hair, okay? The first cut is premium. The reason the first cut is premium is because your hair, anyone's hair, naturally tapers. So when you're wanting to make those beautiful brushes like my Classic 13, all of that squirrel hair that I have, it's all so soft and fine at the ends and moves like, like just butter and silk because it's tapered naturally. It's a premium grade. Now, your next cut is your regular grade. That's what 90% of other natural hair brushes are made. It's a little bit more nappy. They need to steam it a bit more to get the crinkle out. They give it a bit more treatment, but again, it's got a blunt cut edge. So although it's soft, it's still blunt cut. Hi, Carrie August, love you too. Thank you for tuning in. Finally, the, the toilet brush grade is the hair, is the grade right at the base. That's the third cut along the hair. And it's deeper down, it's much more kinky, it's definitely more wiry, it requires more treatment. 
okay? So A, B, and C, I only use A grade. What's the point of being mediocre? Your tools are the most important thing in your kit. You should invest in quality tools. They will last your career and enable you to be a heavy hitter, you know, technique-wise and results-wise. Different hairs used in natural makeup brushes. Well, of course you all know now that we have goat hair. Of course, you didn't know until I did it. We have cashmere, which is just awesome. Um, you know we have uh, blue squirrel. You know we have pine squirrel. You know we have sable. Um, sable comes from the family of Martin, from the Latin, Martens, M-A-R-T-E-N-S. A Martin is like a stoat, a pine weasel, one of those families, a mink. They are all of the same genus, Martins, okay? Hi there, hi Tracy. So sable comes from that family. That is why it's very waterproof. That's why it's a shorter grade hair, a, a shorter hair length rather than a squirrel hair. And that's why it is a broader hair than a squirrel hair. Then we have, of course, our squirrels come from all over the world. You're going to find your best squirrel hair coming from Russia and Europe, hands down. It's a different grade hair. Male hair versus female hair is even different. You can tell the difference when you feel squirrel brushes coming from different sides of the world. Male hair is usually a little bit softer than the female hair, ironically enough, and they use belly hair as well as tail hair. So sometimes you're going to see brushes that have got really posh hair mixed with really crappy hair. That happens a lot in China. They give the illusion that it is a higher quality of brush, but what they do is they blend in a lower quality hair to make it more cost effective. But I bet you guys tuning in have seen when a, a makeup brush gets really nappy in the middle, um, like, let's see, you know, sometimes you get a brush that gets really kind of messed up right in here, right? All the hair seems to bundle. You're so welcome, Elise. Yeah, that's because they've used two types of hair and basically it's antagonistic and it ends up almost dreadlocking itself. If the hair isn't laid all in the same direction, that definitely happens. Because think about human hair itself. Human hair is, has barbs. It's got, it's porous. If you don't align human hair all the same way, if you have one hair going up and one hair coming down, you have antagonism and it locks up and knots up. I've seen that in brushes too. So it's better to get 100% of the same hair, okay? A lot of you come to me and ask about pony hair. And why is my client getting allergies? Well, how many people that you know are allergic to horses? Who's saying lol? A dreadlock brush head. Tracy, I am kidding you not. Right in the scent. I've, that's the thing. I've seen all this nonsense. Hang on. Will I be able to watch this? I hope so. Um, Sean, what are your thoughts on cruelty-free brushes? Well, Henry, my brushes are cruelty-free. I, you know, um, I, like I said earlier, maybe you missed it. No animal is killed for their hair anymore. Um, that stopped quite a while ago. Mike McClash, hello, darling. Long time no see. Um, you know, it stopped a long time ago. It, it was prevalent, I would say, sort of in the 70s, 60s, you know, you had a lot more culling of hair and skins and all of that anyway. But now, as we're in 2018, squirrel, sable, um, pony hair, all of these hairs are a side, are, are, are a, a product of, a byproduct of the food industry. So they're not killed for their hair. Now, if that sits with you okay, that's on your conscience. I have no problem with it. I'm not eating squirrels and I'm not eating martins and I'm not eating horses. I'm sorry that they've died, but you know, they really helped me do great work. So I'm going to carry on doing that. Okay. Um, saying that, I do believe that there is a lot of room for great quality vegan brushes. I love using my vegan artist brushes. They give great effects. They're more cost effective. Um, my big thing with vegan hair is, you know, guys, as we're becoming more eco-conscious, as we're becoming more earth-conscious, because we have to be, because this is a living organism, it's not a rock that we live on. So I wonder, you know, we're making all these synthetics and plastics that are chemically based. What is that manufacturing process actually doing to the environment? 
is it better than using a natural hairbrush or is making a natural hairbrush actually better on the environment than producing a synthetic that goes into a makeup brush this is food for thought so you see it is all about yes Tracy you get it you dig excellent so you know these are personal choices we make and that's why I, I keep saying to you guys I really want you to to be conscious as artists and think about the decisions that you make remember how powerful we are as a collective remember that the consumer is highly important and 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 the way that you think and the contribution you give to your work and our industry and this planet because everything is interconnected is uh, will result in how your work looks you know it's all energy based so I don't know, you know, for me, yeah, this is a synthetic. It looks like a natural hair, but I am still very old school. I like the fact that I've got wooden handles that come from sustainable um, forests. I love the fact that my glue is non-toxic as much as possible because I have obviously got to have an alcohol solvent based glue in the base. But I love the way that every single thing in my natural collection is as close as I can get to eco, you know. But can I truly say that for a vegan brush? I mean, it's so ironic, isn't it? Because we have a vegan community that really need taken care of equally uh, uh, intensely as we do our natural hair community. And their ethics govern that they don't use a natural hair because it goes against their vegan feelings. But yet, what is the manufacturing process doing? to provide that vegan customer with that synthetic hair. It's really, really interesting, isn't it, people? I would love it if they could make brushes from fiber again, from plant fiber, and maybe that is a way forward in the future. Maybe they can start to develop that. But um, I'd love you guys to ask me some questions. I really would. If there's anything that is bugging you, um, here's another thing I hear. A sponge is better at applying a foundation than a brush. Says who? Says which professional? Oh yeah, none. <laughs> really? Hang on, Gillian, I already have lots of your brushes. However, I've just ordered more, oh, more classic collection. Love a bit of that, darling, thank you very much. Well, hello, Mr. Ryan Burke, one of my favorite artists on the planet. Absolute genius. So, you know, Ryan, we're talking about, hi, we're talking about synthetics versus vegan and all of the nonsense I hear. Things brushes shouldn't do when you hold them in your hand. Brushes should not split when you're, do <laughs> when you're doing a makeup, obviously. So why are you doing that? Brushes should not feel like a sledgehammer. They should not be heavy. Every time you pound your customer's face, just think about the damage you're doing to them over years. You know, it's not a good thing to beat a face. I detest the term beat face. I know where it comes from. I know the derivative, but I don't beat face. I do a waltz. I much prefer doing a waltz or a little fairy dance or doing little butterfly kisses across the face. It should be light. It should be relaxing. It should be inspirational. Claire, you can laugh your ass off, but it's absolutely true. I do a fairy dance across my client's face. Pretty much every single person I ever put makeup on falls asleep, even the nervous ones. So it's a testament to technique and it's a testament to the products. If you're looking to improve the quality of your natural hair brushes, how you maintain them is really, really important. Now, you know, let's get on to the subject of, of brush hygiene, because I'm not kidding you. The stuff I'm seeing on social media is utterly horrific. In 30 years, I have never had anyone have so much as a pimple from a makeup application. Oh my God, there's too... What about question? I couldn't see that. Did you specifically answer a question already about Mac switching to all synthetic? No one's asked me that question. Uh, love a dance. I totally agree. I hate the term beat face. Yes, it, it's it's great for drag queens. Look at drag queens. They're larger than life. Their performance is larger than life. If anyone has the right to say, I'm going to beat that shit out, no problem. But that's not what I do. You know, I've seen some artists using real hair brushes 
for liquid or cream foundation. What's your thoughts? Lisa, Lisa, I only use um, a sable foundation brush. I have for 30 years. I haven't changed that in 30 years. I love this brush so much. I made it the way I wanted it for me when I started my own brush company, seriously. Um, you can't beat a natural hair brush to foundation. I, I know people love sponges. I know they love that conical sponge. I've never used it. I've tried it. I didn't like it. I haven't used a sponge as a beauty applicator probably now for, I would say, 18 years. The only time I use a sponge is when I'm using a, a stipple sponge to put texture or personality into a makeup that I'm doing. Otherwise, it is always brushes. I don't even airbrush anymore because I don't like how salinated airbrush is. I find that when you use a brush to paint with, your work is more organic and it looks more real. But that's just my style. I, I know there are artists out there who are utterly superb when it comes to airbrush. For me though, I don't like airbrush beauty makeups. I couldn't have my makeup looking like that. You know, that's the thing. They're using an airbrush because they're buying crappy brushes and they don't know how to use a brush properly because if they knew how to paint it with a brush, they wouldn't need an airbrush. You know, these brushes, it's like doing, it's like doing a makeup with an airbrush with my cashmere collection. Um, they are an utter joy to use. And, and when you have brushes that inspire you, I mean, I didn't realize how diverse cashmere was. I've tried it with so many different things now. Even I've, I've, I've done ink, I've painted with ink with these onto a piece of paper to see how they would hold and draw the ink. So, you know, I really do test them out rigorously. But yeah, I would always say liquid or cream foundation, why aren't you using a brush, Lisa? You know, that's really, really the answer to that. Hello, Heidi, love and kisses back to you. Guys, ask me more questions. So Mac have apparently gone to synthetics. Well, Mac originally used to be made in the United States. Mac were made um, in part by a company in New York City. And uh, over time, they moved out of the States entirely and now are made in China. Hold on, I've seen some artists using, oh, okay, we've done that one. Um, yeah, so if they've gone to all synthetic, well, the thing is, look at MAC as a brand, okay? Viva Glam, in fact, I was talking about this just the other day with another brilliant makeup person, Stephen Dimmick. And you know, MAC have not changed. Viva Glam, they do the same type of foundations, it's the same density, it's the same, same, same. It is no surprise that when you've got sturdier makeup, thicker makeup, and your whole branding is to apply and then add more and then powder and then add a cream and add a highlight, and bake the shit out of it, or highlight something on it, or whatever the, Jesus Christ, there's so much makeup on women's faces these days. It's amazing anyone can get to the skin to flip and kiss it. So, Matt's whole thing is to apply more, more, more. What did I say earlier about synthetics being great for more, more, more? Mac, in my opinion, appeals to Instagram makeup artists more, more, more than the top pros, pros, pros because the only MAC I have in my kit, I have some of the blushes, I think I've got about three powder blushes, I've got some, I've got a taupe shadow for shading, I've got maybe some liquid colours that I like by them, I can't even think, you know, so all of you kids that are using MAC, Yes, you know, it's a great stat it's a it's a great basic brand. It always has been. What Mac did for the industry was to make it accessible to everyone. Everyone knew that a C3 was the same in this country as it was in that country. So they were brilliant. But I think the reason that they've changed to synthetic, first of all, it's a lot cheaper, and secondly, they don't need to really have very refined brushes because they haven't got refined products. So there is my answer to that question. And it's all based on my opinion, of course. It doesn't mean it's law, all right? Uh, I've used synthetics for liquids and for powder, but I'll try real hair bristles. Lisa, do you know what? Do yourself a favor. Do an entire makeup 
just using natural hair brushes. Practice on yourself first. Trial and error. Use sable for all your application for your uh, powder. I mean, I use sable, right? For liquid uh, foundation, cream foundation, I use compact powder. I can do highlighter with it. I can do structure with it. Damn, I've even put eyeshadow with it because if it's the right shape brush, it'll fit anywhere and absolutely easily. So use your sable hair for all your application, then use your soft blending brushes like Pony or Squirrel if you have those, or Goat. Um, use them for all of your blushes, your eyeshadows, and all of that. Also do your brows, use sable, okay? Try and do a full makeup with natural hair. And you know what? You post it and you tag me, Sean Rich London or London Brush Co. But tag me so I can see the work. Any of you viewing this, if you try new stuff based on this discussion today, tag me, Sean Says or Sean Rich London, whatever it is, we'll come up with some sort of hashtag. But yeah, what do I think about Kryolan? Well, that's a very broad question, uh, Hilary. Can you please make it a little bit uh, clearer for me and specific? Um, I think Krylon are great. They've been going for 30 odd years. That's what I do. Yes, Lisa, you must, my love, embrace it. Like I said, put the bullshit that you've heard away, switch Facebook off, get away from those makeup forums, okay? The, oh my God, the nonsense I'm reading in those makeup forums. It is heinous. It is so bad. So no, really, I want that Krylon makeup to uh, question to come back to me. Um, I want I, you know I want you to ask me specifically what it is that you want to know about Krylon. Everybody knows I love their Dermacolor, but I tell you what, my long wear cream's better, um, and I don't mind saying it. <laughs> but we're coming back to hair. Um, you know, we also have hair sourced from China. We have hair sourced from India. We have. Brushes being made all over the world. By the way, Kryolan's brushes, I think, are made in India. Um, and, you know, they're not bad brushes. They do, some of them are a little bit spiky. Um, I don't, I don't use them, obviously. I thought the design was beautiful. They had that kind of retro bullet set at one point that was metal. It looked very beautiful. But I don't use them. I only use Sean Richards London London brush. I mean, when you've got the best, why do you want to settle for anything less, really? I mean, really, you know? Um, yes, Sean, you are speaking truth. I don't like those forums. They know nothing. That's right. And actually, my darlings, the danger of these forums is you've got the blinder leading the blind. Not even the blind leading the blind. The blinder or the blindest. You have people that are not able to make it in a successful makeup career. So they set up these groups because they've got big mouth and they lead and they appear opinionated, but their opinions are biased. It is not a broad spectrum. They deal with brands that tend to support them. So you do get a very biased opinion. If a brand doesn't connect with them for any one reason, they run that brand down publicly. So the only, in life, who do you trust in life? You trust yourself. Whose opinion do you trust? You trust your own until someone else's opinion is proven right and earns your trust. So until your trust is earned, you've got to go find it out for yourself. You cannot rely on the forums on Facebook. They are not, they have no standards. They have no training. Who knows what their background is? Who knows who's sending them free gifts so that they can represent? Because they don't say it openly, but I can tell you now, and I'm thinking about one in particular, I will never say the name, but this person gets given all sorts of things and this person does not support any brand that speaks or doesn't connect with that person. Now, I'm not even gonna say it's female or male. I use the melanin palette on a model that started crying because she said no other makeup artist had had a pro no other makeup artist had a product that worked perfectly on her deep skin. Oh my god, that just made me tear up. This is why I do it. Oh my god. Oh that brat 
Ryan, you made me fucking cry. So the reason I do all of this and I and I do this stuff is because I really I've seen it just go downhill for so many years. Oh, I'm getting really emotional now. I've seen it going downhill for so many years. And I love this industry so much. And what we do, guys, is really important. We touch people for a living. We touch them with our hands. They sit in our chair. They are usually nervous. They're wondering how they're going to end up looking if they've never met you before. And they sit there, either forced to trust us because we're the makeup artist on the job, or they're there because whatever it is, okay? And I make these products because when I started, there wasn't this bullshit out in the industry. It was a much smaller business. The integrity was 10 times more, okay? It was also 10 times bitchier because there wasn't the abundance of work that there is now and people were really cagey about techniques and people did not share. And um, there weren't the products there. We made makeup from nothing. I mean, I remember making creams and um, making all sorts of things. So when I make brushes, I'm making them just every single brush I create. I'm, I'm just thinking about the key factors for me, longevity, performance, diversity, feel, finish, authenticity, and uh, how do high-end brushes from Japan compare with your brushes? And I love and use both. I love Japanese brushes. I do love Hakuhodo. They are very, very honorable, lovely people at Hakuhodo. I would never say a bad word about them. I love Marty. Um, in fact, when I made my best kept secret collection, this is what you're referring to. When I made my best kept secret collection, I made it because a lot of pros had here. You see, it comes back to you guys and me thinking about you. A lot of pros came up to me and said, Sean, we cannot afford Hakuhodo. You know, they give us a 10% discount. Um, they, they, I, I can't, I can't. Can you make me some? <laughs> but I had this happen for three years. And in the end, I went and I sat with Marty and I asked his blessing because I don't believe in ripping people off. I've been ripped off. My brush shampoo has been ripped off even by supposed industry friends of mine. Um, there's no friendship in business it comes down to. So I asked Marty and I said to him, look, I'm being requested by people who love my brand if I could uh, make some uh, sort of more goat based brushes and I said do you mind and he gave me his blessing so I made best kept secrets they're all pyramids in answer to your question they're exactly the same quality as Hakuhodo because I use cashmere it's it, it in its professional name is super goat okay and I've got one minute 56 remaining and then I have to come off so yes it is exactly the same quality in fact what I would say to anyone listening here is that there are two premium brush brands that are amazing, okay? And that is Hakuhodo and Sean Richards London. This is fact, this is not personal. If you want a middle of the road brush brand that is affordable, but you're not gonna get premium at all, but it is a good working brand, that's Delium, okay? Um, if you want, I don't know, really, other brush brands. I've heard that Chikahodo shed. Um, Crown brushes, I hear shed. Royal Langanickel, I, I hear sh they shed. Silk brushes shed. I don't even know about those revolution brushes. Someone told me that they were awful and they fell apart within six months. Um, you're honestly such an integral artist and product, product a true, oh, bless your heart. Um, other brands, I mean, you don't want to buy cheap. So what I say is this, we've all been broke, We've all been students. We all have famine and feast. Save up for one brush every month. Just save up for one brush. Buy one brush a month. Build your kit slowly. If you can't afford a high-end cosmetic brush, <coughs> rather than go to some shitty, cheapy-ass brush company 
go to an art store and see what they have first. And failing that, if you have to go cheap, buy it from Alibaba. Because trust me, all those little pop-up stores or all of those trade shows that are charging three bucks a brush, they're buying them from AliExpress, okay? So you might as well buy direct from China than pay someone else to and then, make, and then charge you more for it when you can do exactly the same. That's it. Four, three, two, one. I'm out. <laughs>